in there. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, worship team. Thank you for leading us. So now we are entering our moment of announcements. And uh, so I just have a few to share with you. Uh, the first one is as of tonight, we will start 21 days of prayer. And uh, you are more than welcome to join us. I believe you will receive information, if not already, about different topics uh, that would be covered during the 21 days. And if you'd like to join us in praying every day for the church, please do. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we are so glad that you have decided to join us online. Uh, this is our very first Vineyard Brussels service for uh, 2021. So welcome to this new year. Um, I was, was thinking about presenting this morning and uh, about our first service of the new year, and I thought I was reminded of, a, of a, one of our core values, which is that all are welcome. And so you are all welcome just as you are. And we love the fact that you have picked us. And so we hope that you um, gain something from this service. Um, and so I also have a verse I would like to share with you, which is in Philippians chapter 4, verse 5. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version. And it says, let your gentle spirit, O Lord, your graciousness, your unselfishness, your mercy, your tolerance, and your patience be known to all people. The Lord is near. And I, I just really felt this was so appropriate for, for the start of a new chapter, for the start of a new year, because he is the reason. He is uh, the, the solution. He is everything. And, um, and just really asking, going deeper, and asking him to to be a part of our lives and so that's really my wish for for myself in this new year it's my wish for you that we would all learn to grow in our intimacy with him and go and go further deeper with him and so let me pray for the service so father we just want to lift your name we want to bring you the glory we want you to be praised in our worship in our lives in how we work in everything that we do we want you to have the glory and so lord i just want to pray pray for, for the worship team. I want to pray for, for the tech crew. I want to pray for, for Ricky who will be preaching today. I just pray for your anointing to be on every single person serving us today. We are so grateful for them. And we thank you, Lord, that you will show up, that you will usher in your presence as, as the worship team leads us, Lord, and, and that you will take care of all of the technicalities involved in, in getting this service online. And Lord, we also want to walk into this new year with eager anticipation as to what you have planned for us. And so, Lord, I just want to praise you and thank you for the past year. Thank you for everything that it held. And I just look forward to what you have planned for us for next year. In Jesus' name. And so, worship team, I hand over to you. Uh, okay. Good morning, Vineyard family. Uh, this morning, I just wanted to start with a, a small song that's my family and I, we, we like to listen to and to sing uh, every be uh, beginning of a new year. It's called New Season. And I thought, uh, yeah, it could be good to, to sing it this morning and to declare it for this new year. And it goes like this. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing. Is flowing my way. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to me. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing is coming my way. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season, yes. It's a new season. It's a new season coming. To me, ooh, 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 ooh,
when ocean tides my soul will rest in your embrace for I
sun to rise and you lay it down to rest you hold this heart of mine and you hold my every breath such an awesome God so
wonderful, such an awesome God, so selfless, so generous, so Hello again. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, worship team. Thank you for leading us. So now we are entering our moment of announcements. And uh, so I just have a few to share with you. Uh, the first one is as of tonight, we will start 21 days of prayer. And uh, you are more than welcome to join us. I believe you will receive information, if not already, about different topics uh, that would be covered during the 21 days. And if you'd like to join us in praying every day for the church, please do so. And I believe there will be three corporate uh, online events that uh, where we can gather online and actually pray with one another as well during these 21 days. The other exciting news is that we will be restarting Connect Groups uh, and that will start right after the, the 21st day of prayer. Um, so end of January, you will be receiving uh, flyers and information about the new Connect Groups for this cycle. The cycle lasts usually about eight to nine weeks. And uh, so look out for information about that because there's lots to choose from and this should be really exciting. And finally, I just want to thank you, everyone, uh, for, for the ones who have been really giving faithfully. For those of you who, who partner with us, we really appreciate your gifts and, uh, and your uh, faithfulness. And uh, I just want to, for people who are interested to, to donate, who are interested to give, I just want to give you uh, the three ways that that is possible. You can either do um, an occasional donation and by mm -hmm. just doing a bank transfer, bank details should be coming online. And then uh, the other way is you can also uh, use a secure link that will take you to a page and then you can just put in the amount that you want to give and uh, press send. And I believe there should be a QR code showing up on my screen that you can also use to do so. So whether it's just an occasional gift or you want to partner with us in setting up a monthly installment, um, those are the three ways you can do that. Okay, those are for the announcements. And now I have the pleasure to present our uh, speaker for today, which is Ricky, Ricky Venter, our lead pastor. We're so excited uh, that he's going to share with us today, uh, starting in the new year. So I'm just gonna pray for him. So Lord, I just pray that you would really um, bless Ricky, bless the words that you have placed on his heart to share with us today. I pray, Lord, that um, all of the words that he speaks are the ones that you, you want him to say. And Lord, I just thank you so much that um, your spirit is with him. I pray for your anointing upon him and that he would be able to, to share clearly what it is you want him to say. So thank you, Lord, for Ricky. Thank you for Ricky and Natalia, and uh, thank you for their leadership in Jesus' name. Okay, Ricky, let's hear from you. I'll take it away. I will definitely take it away. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year to the Vineyard Brussels family. Um, uh, we are once again um, entering a brand new year, 2020 is gone. 2021 has come and we are excited. Um, I love the song that Aaron and the team sang this morning. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing is coming our way. We are going to continue to trust the Lord for fresh anointing. We're going to continue to trust the Lord for new things in 2021. Yes, we still have some of COVID-19 that has carried over into 2020, that is carrying over into 2021, but we thank God that His mercies are new every morning and His faithfulness is great and to us, his children. All right, so as we look back at 2020, um, uh, yes, it has been one of the most difficult years that we have faced um, uh, as a people in um, uh, 2020 since, I think, World War II. But God has still been faithful, even in the midst of the difficult 
time that we went through, God was still God all by himself. And we want to take a quick look back. Is that all right? We're going to play a short video and we're going to celebrate it together. Some of the incredible things God did in the year 2020. You see, we continually said that COVID-19 cannot stop the cross. And while the whole world was, 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 was under the grips of COVID-19, the Lord was still at work and he was still moving and he was still saving and he was still delivering and he was still healing and the Holy Spirit of God was still hovering over the nations and he was doing what he wanted to do when he wanted to do it and uh, he has used this church in mighty ways in 2020. So how about we take a look at this video that John put together for us um, uh, and let's celebrate together the goodness and the greatness of our God.
Jesus, this morning we celebrate you. We celebrate a community that stuck together in the good times and in the lots of good times. People that continued to support the ongoing work of the kingdom of God, not just here in the Vineyard Brussels, not just here in Belgium and in Europe, but across the world. Thank you. Thank you for just being family. We appreciate you and we love you. And we're looking forward to so much more in 2021. I'm out of breath because I just ran to go grab my jacket. If you were in the building with us this morning, you would know that it is freezing for some reason or the other. (laughs) So this morning, I'm going to be preaching on prayer that transforms your work, your walk with God. For the next four weeks, we are going to be, we're going to be majoring on the topic of prayer. We're going to be speaking about prayer that transforms our personal walk with God. Then we're going to be talking about prayer that transforms our church and community. Then we're going to move on to prayer that transforms our city. And then finally, we're going to be talking about prayer that transforms a nation. See, I don't mind change. Transitions don't scare me. I, we serve a God that, that does not change, but who is consistently calling us to grow. He's consistently calling us to mature. He's consistently calling us to grow, go from glory to glory, from strength to strength. Consistently. And now we're standing on the brink of another new year, 2021. I love the new year because it holds so much possibility for us. It holds so much opportunity for us. And even though, as I said a bit earlier on, we've got some of COVID-19 that's moved from from 2019 to 2020 to 2021. And even though we haven't seen much change in terms of our economic situation, in terms of the political situation, in terms of our health situation, Yes, we have a vaccine, but it's probably going to take a while before um, we hit critical mass in terms of vaccinations across Europe and the world. So we are still continuing into 2021 with some of what, 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 what was left over of 2020. What I love about God is that even though our external environment did not change, It does not affect my internal environment. I get to choose how I position my heart in times of trouble. I get to to choose how I position my spirit in times of difficulty. And one of the most effective ways that I personally know how to, to position my heart is through prayer. It's through growing closer to God. It's by getting on my knees and saying, Dad, here I am. Here's my heart. There's so much happening in the world right now. There is so much uncertainty. There's so much fear. There's so much anxiety. Um, uh, there's the, the people are losing jobs right now. People are getting sick. Others are dying. But I thank you, God, that you are still God all by yourself. And in the midst of all of this, I can look to you, the author and the perfecter of my faith, knowing that you are the one who began this good work in me. And you are the one that will bring it into completion. Prayer should be the breath of every believer. And I've said this once, I'll say it a million times, prayer should be the engine room of every church. If we are trusting the Lord for revival, if we are trusting the Lord for reformation, if we're trusting the Lord for transformation, we need to be transformed in our prayer lives first. So we are starting off 2021 as a church community with our 21 days of prayer initiative. And we would love for you to join in with us at home. Pray at home on on a day-to-day basis for the next 21 days. And then join us online once a week for the next couple of weeks. We're going to be joining each other as a community, as a family to pray together on Zoom. We are looking forward to just assaulting the heavenlies, the, the spiritual atmosphere around Brussels with the joy and the life of Jesus Christ. Yes? So come and join in with us. 
Um, uh, if you have not received an email yet, please send an email to the, to the church so that we can get you involved in praying in this next season. Let me read a couple of scriptures for you very quickly. Romans 12 verse 12 says, continuing steadfast in prayer. Ephesians 6 18 says, praying always. Colossians 4 verse 12 verse 2 says, continue in prayer. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17, it says, pray without ceasing. Proverbs 15 verse 8 says, the prayer of the upright is his delight. Today, we're going to be looking at the life of one of my favorite authors in the Bible. One of my favorite characters in the Bible. A young man who slew a giant, who later went on to become a king, but he's known to God as a man who was after his own heart. This is the man David. I want to read to you from Psalm 63, from verse 1 to 8. And David says, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and weary parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods with singing lips my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I will remember you. I think of you through, through the watches of the night because you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Father, thank you for your word this morning. And I pray that as we open up your word, Lord, that your word will bring transformation to the life of your people. And as your word transforms me, Father, that, that by your grace, by the power of your Holy Spirit, your word will transform your people. That some seeds will drop into our souls today. That will spring up, Lord, into wells of life in us, in Jesus' name. Lord, we are not satisfied being nominal Christians, Lord. Lord, we want to be on fire for you, Lord. In the city, in this nation, in this world, we want to be known as a people of passion, a people that carry the grace and the fire of Christ Jesus, not just in church on a Sunday, but everywhere we live our lives. So today, as we, as we talk about prayer that transforms our walk with you, Holy Spirit of God, I pray that you would come and you would breathe, breathe fire, you would breathe your life upon your word this morning and that it will fall into our spirits and it will bring forth fruit lord it will multiply multiply lord into many souls coming to know you father in this nation in jesus name amen 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 let it multiply lord <laughs> who is god to you that's my first question from psalm 63 and verse 1 yes lord from Psalm 63 and verse 1, who is God to you? David starts off in Psalm 63 verse 1 saying, you God are my God. You God are my God. Now there are two ways of reading that scripture, that opening salvo of Psalm 63. David starts off with an acknowledgement. He says, God, you are my God. So he puts it out there right from the beginning. I am owned by God. Somebody once said, Christ is Lord of all or he is not Lord at all. Very often when we are in crisis situations, we don't necessarily run to God first. We try to fix the problems with our own strength, our own resources. This is called self-reliance. It comes from a belief that our prayers will not really change anything. 
or it won't help the trouble that we are in. We've prayed before and nothing happened. So we are compelled to take matters into our own hands. I can do this myself. That's self-reliance. And in this passage of scripture, David nullifies self-reliance altogether. And he says, God, you are my God. You are the Lord of my life. My reliance is on you. David knows where to go for help. He says, oh God, you are my God. The second way you can read the scripture is as a cry for help. Oh God, my God. Oh God, my God. Oh God, my God. Early I will seek you. And he looks to God before he looks in any other direction for his answers. Early. Early. Before anything else, he looks to God. In Matthew 26, just before Jesus got crucified, he prayed. And when he was done praying, the soldiers came to arrest him. And in that moment, Peter pulls out a sword. I don't know if you remember the story, but Peter pulls out a sword and he just lops off the ear of um, one of the soldiers that had come to arrest Jesus. In that moment, Peter, who should have been praying, was sleeping. The story goes that while, while they were on the mountain, Jesus asked them to pray with him. But they fell asleep. But when he woke up and he saw Jesus being, being on the verge of being arrested by, by, by the soldiers, he takes out his sword, he cuts off a man's ear, and he tries to fight a spiritual battle in the natural. That's the futility of fighting many of the battles we are facing with our own resources. We are fighting unseen forces with the help of God in prayer. We need him to fight on our behalf. So the first point for this morning is, who is God to you? Psalm 63 verse 1, uh, David says, God, you are my God. God, you are my God. Early, I will seek you. In Psalm 63, verse 1a, he, he, he goes on to say, I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. And in this season, I think, when this COVID season hit, the Lord impressed upon my heart the importance for us as a people to really become hungry for Him. To become hungry for the more of God. To become passionately, passionately hungry for Jesus more than we are hungry for, for the physical stuff or the emotional stuff that, that, that so easily becomes the beginning and the end of our lives. God says, I want you to crave pure spiritual milk. This is what I want you to crave in this season. I want you to crave the more of God. And right here, David once again imparts to us this desire for a hunger for God. In Matthew 5 and verse 6, and this was the core passage I, I preached on when I preached on hunger. In Matthew 5 and verse 6, Jesus said, Blessed are those who are hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And the context of that is people were following Jesus consistently and, with, and without, without food, without purse, for days they would follow him. And they would be really, really hungry because there was no Aldi, there was no Lidl, there was no Coroid for them to go and buy some food. They were hungry. Really hungry. How many times did he have to feed them with nothing? You guys remember the story? Who's got five loaves? Who's got, who's got fish? Constantly they came after him without carrying any food with them. 
This kind of hunger that Jesus was speaking about in Matthew 5 and verse 6 is more like the word famished. I am famished. I am famished. I am famished. Man, I'm famished. I haven't eaten a whole day. I haven't eaten a whole week. I am famished. I'm hungry. There's an all-encompassing hunger. My tummy is eating itself at this point in time. I am so hungry. If I don't get any food into my tummy right now, I might just die. This is the kind of hunger that these people were exposed to. How hungry are we for God? Can we say, like David says, in a dry and parched land, in a dry and weary land where there's no water, I am hungry for you, Lord. If we want to see our lives transformed, if we want to see our families transformed, if we want to see our nation transformed, it's going to start with this overwhelming hunger, this overwhelming desire for personal transformation in His presence. Psalm 63 and verse 2, my third point for this morning. David had a record of intimacy. Let's read that together. I have seen you in the sanctuary. I have seen you. In the sanctuary. This is the past tense. I have seen. I have seen. The reason why many fail in battle is because they wait until the hour of battle. The reason why others succeed is because they have gained their victory on their knees way before the battle was even fought. I think as Christians, we need to get this into our hearts and into our spirits. We need to be praying long before the battle has commenced. David knew that it's his time in God's presence that prepared him for his life. Psalm 27, 4 to 5. Let me read that for you very quickly. One thing I ask from the Lord. This only do I seek, that I, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. Now, this is the part that I want to draw your attention to. It says, for, for. Whenever you see the words, therefore, or you see the word for, you ask yourself, what is the therefore, therefore? What is the for, therefore? And that will take you back to the previous part of the scripture. It says, I seek you, Lord, because in the day of trouble, you will keep me safe in your dwelling. You will hide me in the shelter of your sacred tent, and you will set me high upon a rock. Don't wait for trouble. Don't wait for the difficulties to come. Get into His presence now. A greater understanding of the nature of God gained from time spent in His presence will, will, will solidify your trust in God in times of trouble. So my third point for you today is get into a habit of being in His presence. My fourth point is in his presence, you get an understanding of his mighty power. Let's read Psalm 63 and um, uh, the A part. I have seen you in your sanctuary and then and beheld you, your power and your glory. I've beheld your power and your glory. Why have I looked for you? Because I want to see. I've looked for you because I want to be exposed to I want to be exposed to your power and your glory. I want to see your power and your glory. You know, this last week, as I've just been spending time in God's presence, the Lord again reminded me, he asked me, Ricky, why do you come to spend time with me? Why do you come to spend time in your presence? And I, I realized that there's been some seasons in my life where I, I went to God because I just wanted to get filled up. Like, man, I just want to get filled up, God. I'm going to get filled up. There were times when I went to God because I needed some material for a sermon. There, there were times for God, but the times I went into His presence just because I felt powerless and I wanted anointing. So I went into His presence for something. I did not go into His presence for Him. 
I did not go into his presence just to be with my father. I went into him, into his presence to get. And I feel the Lord just speaking to me in this last, last week. He says, Ricky, I want your time that you spend in my presence to be just about me. And as you're exposed to my love, as you're exposed to my grace, as you're exposed to my thinking about you, you will get the power, you'll get the anointing, you'll get the refreshing that you need, you'll get the joy that you need as byproducts of me. Because everything that you seek is in me. But seek first me. It says first seek first the kingdom of God. But before we seek the kingdom, we need to seek the king of the kingdom. Lord, we pray for that power that is released, Lord, in coming to know the omnipotent, all-powerful God. That supernatural power of God that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever think or even imagine. In Acts 1 and verse 8 it says, But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in, in Jerusalem, Judea, in Samaria, and into the uttermost part of the earth. In effect, Acts 1 and verse 8 reads, you will be receive power to become. You will receive power to become. The desire of God is to change us that only His life will be seen. Therefore, I want to pray, God, I'm willing. I'm available to receive from you as I look into your face. It's only when we have spent time in his presence. It's only when we have beheld the power of God to bring change, reformation, transformation in our own personal lives that we will become the message that Belgium so sorely needs, that Europe so sorely needs, that the world so sorely needs. It's only when we spend time in the presence of God on our knees saying, Lord, in your presence there's fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. In your presence, God, change me as I'm exposed to you as I see you as I see you number five for this morning a commitment to praise and worship in Psalm 63 3 to 5 I had to put this out there guys because I'm a worshiper first before I'm a preacher, before I'm a, I'm a, a father, before I'm a, a husband, before, before I am a, um, any of these things, I am a worshiper first. I'm a lover of Jesus first because I know the power that is released in praise. I know the power that's released in worship. I know the intimacy that is released in getting into the presence of God. David says, because your love is better than life in verse 3. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. Come on. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. The Lord is speaking a word to us concerning praise and worship. I think when I was when we, we were in France in 2020, the Lord the Lord spoke to Natalia and I saw clearly about a breakthrough that was going to come in Belgium through praise and through prayer. When I'm talking about praise, worship is our lifestyles. Worship is, is, is intimate worship. When I'm talking about praise, I'm talking about the declaration of the name of Jesus over our nation. I'm talking about lifting the banner of Christ Jesus, saying Jesus is Lord over our nation. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord over Brussels and saying his name is great. He is worthy and lifting up his name above every other power, every other principality in this nation so that those that are in, in, in the, the, the realms of power can see man. There is a God and he's alive and he's well in this nation. We are trusting the Lord for that day where through praise and through prayer we can see breakthrough in this nation in Jesus name I love 
I love um, uh, in uh, Acts 16, 25 to 20, 26, about midnight, it says, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Imagine that, guys. We are singing praise. We are singing worship to the Lord. And those that are imprisoned, those that are still held in bondage, they are hearing the worship. They are hearing the praises of God that is being, being lifted up from the hearts of people who are hungry for more of God. And they can see this expression of love coming from our hearts. And suddenly there was a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Imagine that in the spirit, guys, when we are worshiping and we are praising. Can we imagine how the chains of, of depression, how the chains of oppression, how the chains of sickness and disease is broken of people's lives and they come into a place of freedom in Christ Jesus because of our worship to God. When you make up your mind to worship God in the midst of difficulties. When you make up your mind to be thankful and grateful to God for who he is in the midst of difficulties. That is what the devil cannot stand. He cannot stand a grateful Christian. A thankful Christian whose heart and mind is set on him. And this is my sixth point for today. I've got seven all in all, guys. I'm going to get through them this morning. And I pray that by grace you will be blessed and that your walk with God will actually move from one place of glory to another one in Jesus' name. My sixth point for today is a heart that is set on him. Psalm 63 and verse 6 says, On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches." Of the night. David meditates on the word of God. See the Israelites divided the, the, the night into three watches. So David was busy praying or meditating on God's word in the night watches. So he probably couldn't sleep. He must have had some problems with sleeplessness at this point in time. And as he's not sleeping, he's meditating on God's word. Instead of, of going to, to, binge, to binge watch a series, he says, I'm going to meditate on God's word. I am going to lay on my bed and I'm going to allow God's word to permeate my heart, to permeate my spirit. Let 2021 be the year where God God's word richly dwells within us. You see, there's a battle for the soul of man that is happening right now. There's a battle for the heart of man that is happening right now in the spiritual realm. There's a battle for your thoughts, for your way of believing, for your way of thinking. There's a battle going on in the heavenlies right now where, where, where Satan wants to take, he wants to take ground in your mind. He wants to take ground in your soul. He wants to he wants to stop you from grabbing hold of God's best for your life. And the way that he's going to do that is by, 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 by depositing huge amounts of junk into your, into your heart, into your mind. And the way that we get rid of all of the stuff that so easily besets us is by allowing ourselves to be washed by the water of the word, to allow God's word to, to richly dwell in us. And so we can be permeated with his word and from the inside out, his word have I hid in my heart so I will not sin against him. His word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. His word is what brings transformation into my life. It is his word that makes sure that I'm not conformed to the pattern of the world but I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind. It is his word in, and by setting our hearts and our minds on God's word in 2021 we are setting ourselves up for victory in Jesus name. He that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty and I will say of the Lord he's my refuge and my fortress my God in him, I will trust. You know, there was, a, there, was, there was a song we used to sing as kids. This joy that I have, the world did not give it to me. This peace that I have, the world did not give it to me. 
This love that I have, the world did not give it to me. The world did not give it, so the world cannot take it away. Nothing and no one can take away what God has deposited into our spirits and into our hearts. Nothing and no one. Our peace does not come from from what's going to happen in 2021 with COVID-19. That's not where our peace comes from. Our peace comes from knowing the rock of our salvation, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our eyes is fixed on Him knowing that he's the author and the perfecter of our faith and he promises us that he will keep us in perfect peace in Isaiah 26 and verse 3 you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you and finally for this morning my seventh point he will deliver you Psalm 63 and verse 8 says I will cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Your right hand. If you're a boxer, you will know that, that you, you jab with your left and you, you give the knockout with your right, unless you are a southpaw. And most boxers are not southpaw. They jab with the left and they knock you out with the, with, the, with the right hand. And the right hand of God speaks of the power of God. It speaks of his ability. It speaks of God's ability to do that which we cannot do. It speaks of God's mighty power at work on our behalf. That is what it speaks of. The right hand of God that knocks down the enemy and puts him on his back and says, you lay there and you don't get up. This is God himself walking in front of us, coming alongside us, coming behind us, surrounding us with his power and with his love. And he fights on our behalf. How many of us this morning needs God to fight on on their behalf? There are many situations in my life. Oh my God, I need your right hand. I need your right hand, Father. In my own strength, Lord, I am I'm liable to mess this thing up. But Father, if I rely on your strength, if I rely on your ability, Lord, you can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ever think or even imagine. So I'm going to rely on your right hand, Lord. And I pray that you would knock this, the teeth out of, this, out, of the, out of this thing in Jesus' name. It's very scriptural, guys. David said, Lord, knock out the teeth of my enemies. I'm saying, yes, knock out the teeth of every situation, every circumstance that comes against me and tries to steal the joy and the life and the peace that God has placed on the inside of me. Lord, fight on my behalf this year. And this is my encouragement to you this morning. If God is for you, who can be against you? Let prayer be the foundation of our lives in 2021. Let prayer be the the, the building blocks upon which we build our relationships in 2021. Let's not move without having been in His presence. We need the empowering presence of His Holy Spirit. So we can lead naturally supernatural lives. The world is waiting for a church who is consistently, continually, completely sold out to Jesus. Will we be that people today? So as we get into a time of prayer, I want to ask you this morning, are you ready to say, Lord, I will decide. I will decide to position my heart in prayer in 2021. Nobody can make that choice for me. I make that decision for me this morning. I decide. I am going to put my past behind me and I'm going to look towards you, Jesus. And I'm going to find what I need in your presence. If that's you this morning and you're saying, Lord, in 2021, I desire so much more of your presence. Where you are, I want you just to to stand up if you'd like to do that. To lift up your hands before the Lord and as, as 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 a sign that I'm receiving this morning. Just the empowering of Jesus to to desire more of his presence, more of him. If you are saying, Lord, I want to fight the right battles. 
I want to fight the right battles. I've been fighting the wrong battles. I've been fighting people. I've been fighting circumstances. I've been fighting situations. Lord, I want to fight the right battles. Bring my attention back to the right battles, Lord. Bring my attention back to the Spirit, Father. I don't want to be fighting circumstances anymore. I don't want to have my face uh, towards the challenges anymore. I don't want to have my eyes on the anxieties and the fears anymore. I want my eyes back on you, Jesus. If that's you this morning and you're saying, I am committing in my heart to fight some battles in the Spirit in 2021, I want you as well, where you are, just to say, God, here I am. I am that person. I am going to be fighting some battles in the Spirit this year in Jesus' name. And we're going to fight for our families. We are going to fight for our friendships. We are going to fight for our our own healing. We're going to fight for our own breakthroughs. We might have been stuck in the same situation for years. And God is saying 2021 is a year for breakthrough. If you decide, if you say, Lord, this is the season for me. I'm going to break through this thing. In Jesus' name, you will see the redemption of the Lord. This is the year where we trust the church of God to arise with fire in its eyes. And if that's you this morning and you're saying, man, I am standing for the church this morning. I am standing for the church of God, the community of Christ to be salt and light in this nation. If you are saying, I want to put my lot in with this in 2021. I want to, I want to reach out to my community. I want to tell my friends about Jesus. I want to live a life that is filled with, with the saltiness of Christ. If that's you this morning, I want to ask you as well where you are to say, God, that's me. In 2021, Lord, I will be more because everything I need is inside of me. Let's get hungry for God again. Let's start worshiping Him once again. And let's start seeing bondages being broken over our nation. In Jesus' name. So where you are, I just ask you just just to tune your heart and your mind into Jesus. Forget about me. I'm just an imperfect vessel being used by a perfect God. And this morning, I want to ask you to reach out to Jesus, to look to him and to say, Lord, here I am. I am making a decision this morning to come into your presence and to find life and to find healing and to find restoration, Father, at your throne. Lord, at your feet, in your arms. I will find what I need for my life. Lord, I pray for your people this morning. Holy Spirit of God, I pray for breakthrough in the lives of your people this morning in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you would come, Lord, in your strength. You would come in your power, Father, and you would break through the bondages, Lord, that has kept us held back, Lord, for the longest time in Jesus' name. This morning, we take authority, Father, over every word that has been spoken over your people, and we call it to naught in the name of Jesus. We are not defined by the lies of the evil one. We are defined by the truth of God spoken over our lives. And this morning, we reach out and we say, Jesus, we grab hold of you because you are the author and the perfecter of my life no one else this morning we speak freedom father over your people lord those that have been 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 held up lord in in depression and oppression who has been trusting you for joy but have been struggling lord against this substance almost feels like like they, they've got to break through this on this membrane, Father, I pray this morning in the name of Jesus that you would open it up, Father. Break it open this morning in the name of Jesus. Let the light of God arise on their hearts and their lives again this morning in the name of Jesus. We break the power of oppression and depression and stress and anxiety and fear of the lives of your people this morning in Jesus' name. No longer will we be addicted to sleeping tablets. No longer will we be addicted, Father, to sleep but to, to anxiety and stress tablets father no longer will be will be addicted to substances lord to help us to cope but in this next season father we are going to look to you and we're going to find what we need for life in you once again in jesus name holy spirit of god we pray that you would come and you transform our lives from the inside out lord in jesus name in jesus name not by might not by power but by your holy spirit by your Holy Spirit. And we commit ourselves once again to worship. 
we commit ourselves to dancing in your presence and to see the bondages break, Father. We commit ourselves, Lord, to dancing in the streets. We commit ourselves, Lord, to dancing where, 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 where angels fear to tread, Lord. We commit ourselves, Father, to bring the light and life of Jesus to our nation. Because you've called us by name. And we will be the people of God's presence in the city, in the season, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And amen. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. So this morning, if the Lord has spoken to you, I want to encourage you to get hold of us. And I want you to, to, to write us an email. You can write to prayer at vineyardbrussels.be, prayer at vineyardbrussels.be, and you can, you can let them know, man, this morning, the Lord touched me. Oh, I need some prayer. Would, so would, you, would you facilitate prayer for me this morning? I need somebody to pray with me. That's you. Please do that. And if you've been watching this broadcast this morning and you've never received Jesus into your life, I want to encourage you. Today is your day. All you have to do is to say, Lord, here I am. I'm a sinner. I confess that I've sinned against you. But today, Lord, I, I, I repent, Lord. I give those things up. And I ask you to come live in my heart once again. And by your grace, I pray that I would be set free to live a life of purpose and joy in Jesus' name. If you've prayed that prayer with us this morning, let us know. We want to continue to disciple you and pray with you and trust God for growth in your life in Jesus' name. So family, it's 10 to 12 already. I've gone way over time this morning. I want to pray that the Lord bless you this week, that he keeps you this week, and that you would be the light and the salt of the world in Jesus' name. We love you and we thank you for watching. Until next week, bless you. Amen and amen and amen.
Everything that, everything that.